using the tracking sheets within the middle and upper primary. From an individual student level, it's important that we profile each student, establishing appropriate teaching and learning goals. From a classroom level and that range in ability, it's important to establish no more than three targeted teaching groups on those tracking sheets. Set up tips. Number one, annually request the PLD tracking sheets from the website. Tip two, it's important that those downloadable tracking sheets are converted into a cloud-based format where each classroom can simultaneously access the tabs on that tracking sheet rather than individual Excel sheets. Tip three, it's essential that staff using those tracking sheets view this really short video that outlines the three functions that are required when utilising those tracking sheets, how to hide and unhide columns, how to cut and paste entire rows of data, and also how to colour field cells and colour and identify your targeted teaching plan. Tip four, within the tracking sheets, particularly for tier two and tier three students, um, it is possible to write in or type in abbreviations, not full words, outlining the complications that students bring to their learning and often identifying why they are tier two and tier three students. Tip five, hide the columns that are not required. In term three, you want to hide term one and term two and hide term four and have term three in view. Only have the current term in view and hide the others. There is a video that outlines how this can be achieved. More so relevant to the junior primary classrooms, but sometimes this does occur in middle and upper primary. If there are students that score quite low at a CVC level um, and not in subsequent columns, it is necessary to look at this screen, looking at foundation level skills. If a composite class, it is essential that those composite classes are put together on the same spreadsheet. What you don't want to do is have year five on one spreadsheet and year four on another sheet. What we want to do is bring all of that data together and look at what is the class profile and the three targeted teaching groups for those combined two year levels. The six steps in utilising the PLD tracking sheets with fidelity. Step one, administer the placement test. Step two, mark the assessment and use the percentage converter when marking. Step three, enter the percentages onto the tracking sheet. Step four, this is where your first function needs to be activated. What you'll need to do is colour code, use the paint pot to highlight what you intend to teach over the next term. So nine to 10 weeks. Aim to fill only one cell or two cells, never three or four cells. Let's watch this short demonstration video. It's nice and simple. What you need to do is highlight what do you intend to teach and look right across that line, not just the first time students dip under 80%. Next step involves moving students so that you've got your tier ones at the bottom of the, or your strong students at the bottom of the spreadsheet and your weak students at the top of the spreadsheet. We're trying to establish a triangle. Again, this is one of the functions that is explained inside that video, but here is another short demonstration. So from a patchy profile, we need to start to line up our students. 
So they move from alphabetical order into targeted teaching groups and sometimes too many groups because then we're going to merge some of them together. But cutting and pasting the entire rows of data so that the students are lined up in rectangles. You will need to remove excess lines because in, in inserting and removing lines, there will be some excess that needs to be trimmed back and moving the weaker student to the top. Step six means describing, sometimes merging two of those groups together, but describing what is the plan for term one for this group, hopefully following the teaching sequence outline, and for these two groups, what is the plan for the term ahead? If students are absent, pull them out of the class profile and put them at the bottom of the spreadsheet. Students who have left, again, remove them from the class profile and place them at the bottom of the spreadsheet. Red flags, common errors where teachers will say, I'm finished, I've followed the PLD process, but in an incomplete manner. Common issue one, data has been entered into the tracking sheet, but steps four, five, and six are incomplete. Or here, finished, well, no, not quite. You've highlighted what you wanted, what you intend to teach but we need to line up those students, as has been demonstrated, and then describe the teaching plan close, but not complete. Or I've lined up my students and I've got five groups. No, PLD says three groups. So a couple of those groups we need to merge together and then we need to refine what our teaching plan is. Once PLD has been launched in your school, the next challenge is to keep maintaining PLD's implementation. We've got a really nice web page with a range of nice simple tips that you can implement to keep PLD fresh and being implemented with fidelity. Now, one of those areas is utilise the tracking sheets with fidelity. Remember, through the PLD website, there's plenty of support that is available to you. This concludes using the PLD tracking sheets in the middle and upper primary. Best wishes. If you found this information useful, don't forget to click the subscribe button and check out our related videos shown here. If you have any questions or feedback, please add them to the comments below and we'll be sure to respond. Otherwise, you can reach us via live chat on our website, pld-literacy.org. Thanks again for viewing.